So, y'all are interested in the Bat Family, huh? Oh yeah, I'm not Ben, the comic story, and I'm Sal from TV Little House. Ben came down with a heck of a nasty cold and he lost his voice, so he's asked a few friends like me to read off some of his most requested topics. But if you do enjoy my sultry, sexy voice, you can see me weekly over at TV Little House discussing some of your favorite comic book plots with my buddies Ben and Ethan. So today we're going to give you a quick overview of all the members of the Bat Family that are relevant right now in the New 52 of DC Comics. For a more in-depth look at the Robins, Ben will be back in a little bit to cover all of them, even the Elseworlds ones. But speaking of Robins, let's start with everybody's favorite, Dick Grayson, also known as Robin and Nightwing. Now, if you didn't already know, originally Dick Grayson was an acrobat in a circus with his mother and father. A gangster was trying to extort money out of the circus owner, and to prove they meant business, he murdered Dick Grayson's father and mother by sabotaging their act. Seeing a bit of himself in Dick Grayson's tragedy, Bruce Wayne took it upon himself to bring the young boy in and take him under his wing, training him to become the original Robin. Eventually, Dick Grayson decided to break off on his own and become... Nightwing. Now Dick Grayson is Bruce Wayne's top choice to replace him as Batman whenever he's needed, such as the time when Batman was lost in time and Dick Grayson did in fact take up the mantle of the Bat. During his stint as Batman, Dick Grayson wound up forming a very close relationship with Damian Wayne, the current Robin. He is Batman's legitimate son, and his mother is Talia al Ghul, Ra's al Ghul's daughter. She tricked Batman one night into conceiving the child with her, and Damien was originally raised as the heir to the al Ghul family. He was actually brought in to be a thorn in Batman's side while also learning from him. He had a rather vicious side to him, which caused quite a few arguments with Alfred, Nightwing, and even Batman himself. Damien wound up earning the title of Robin from Dick Grayson Batman, seeing the need to give the young child structure and build him into a hero, and not just someone trying to take his father's title. During that period, he actually got into a full-on fight, severely injuring Tim Drake, a.k.a. Red Robin. Tim Drake is actually from the same social class as Bruce Wayne, and when he was a kid, Tim actually got to meet Dick Grayson when his family brought him to the circus to get a photo with the Graysons. As time went on, Tim actually used his keen detective skills to figure out that Batman and Robin were Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson. Once Batman became reckless, Tim decided to step in, and seeing his amazing skills, Batman recruited him as the third Robin, once he saw that Tim's mother had died and his father was crippled. Ultimately, Tim's father was killed by Captain Boomerang, making him an orphan and continuing the sad tradition of Robins being orphans. During Batman's stint through time, Red Robin became a solo hero and eventually took on the mantle of leader of the Teen Titans. But the reason Batman became reckless in the first place, and the reason why Tim even got involved at all, was because Batman was dealing with the aftermath of the death of Jason Todd, the second Robin, and eventually the Red Hood. When Dick Grayson decided to leave as Robin and become Nightwing while leading the original Teen Titans, Batman needed an initial replacement Robin. That replacement came in the form of Jason Todd. But Dick Grayson was a massive fan favorite, and everyone hated Jason Todd for replacing him. So a storyline was set up entitled A Death in the Family. DC even set up a hotline that fans could call in and vote as to whether Jason Todd should live or die. By a slim margin, it was voted that he would be killed off by the Joker. Because of this poor reception for Jason Todd, when they introduced the third Robin, which was Tim Drake, he was introduced as someone who impressed Dick Grayson early in his life. Jason Todd eventually was brought back to life as the Red Hood and now leads the Outlaws in the New 52 as the kind of jerk ex-Robin. But it doesn't stop there. Bat families don't end with Robins, as the Core family has even more members, such as Batgirl. While there have been other forms of Batgirl, Barbara Gordon is the current and most popular version. In the original continuity, she was actually created for the 1960s campy TV Batman show starring Adam West and Burt Ward. Even though there had actually been an earlier version of Batgirl in the comics, she was more of a pesky Robin, so they felt they needed one that would carry her own television show in an attempt to get the third season of of Batman going. Well, it worked as Batman was renewed for a new season and Barbara Gordon was introduced in comics in 1967. She was brought into the mainstream comics and sometime around the late 80s was retired, only to be brought back in the famous Alan Moore story arc, The Killing Joke. In that story, the Joker shoots Barbara Gordon, paralyzing her from the waist down, in order to drive Jim Gordon insane. This was Joker's nefarious scheme to prove that anyone can be driven insane just by enduring one horrible day. 
But Barbara didn't let a little thing like paralysis get in her way as she took up the mantle of the Oracle, a more behind the scenes computer whiz while others took up the mantle of Batgirl until the new 52 in which she was Batgirl once again. She's probably the closest of the extended Bat family. But we can't forget about Alfred Pennyworth, who is as much a member of the core family as anybody. His origins have changed a few times, but overall he's considered to be a former intelligence agent. When Alfred's father passed away, murdered by the Court of Owls, his dying wish was that Alfred continue the tradition of the Pennyworth family serving the Waynes. Alfred has also occupied a parental role, acting as Bruce's father figure and helping to take care of each of the Robins over time. Just as important as Alfred, however, is James Gordon. He's the police commissioner who contacts Batman frequently for help in solving various crimes that normally involve supervillains. He uses the trademark Bat Signal to get a hold of Batman. He is also, interestingly enough, Barbara Gordon's father, though he doesn't quite know that she is Batgirl. His actual history changes frequently, and we're not even sure what his origin is in the New 52 at this point. We were given glimmers of information in the Zero Year, but he's still a staple character to the Batgirl. Batman mythos. Lastly, for the core Bat family, we cannot skip over Selina Kyle, aka Catwoman. Throughout Batman's history, he's always been closely linked to Catwoman. As with most of the Bat family, her history does get retooled often, but she may actually have been so close to Batman that she's had a child that could actually be his. She's there whenever Batman needs her, but she does have her own things going on for the most part. Depending on the Bat event, she may or may not show up in them. All right, now that we've discussed the core members of the family, it's time to look at the extended family. Now keep in mind, some of these characters have been written off as a consequence of the New 52 relaunch. Batwoman, originally Catherine Kane, was originally created as a love interest for Batman in 1956 to get rid of the rumors that Batman and Dick Grayson were gay. But the more recent and far more interesting Batwoman is Kate Kane and has her own solo series. She's part of the Bat family when it gets super extended, such as in the recent Batman Eternal run, but overall she doesn't know anyone's secret identities and pops up sparingly. One thing to note is that DC likes to make a big deal about her being a high-profile lesbian superhero. That is all. Batwing is a representative of Batman Incorporated from the city of Tanasha within the Democratic Republic of Congo. He wears a suit that Batman himself has made and recently has been showing up in the Batman Eternal title. Fan favorite spoiler is Stephanie Brown and had been the last replacement Batgirl before the New 52 relaunch, but now she's back in her original spoiler costume and she has just been brought into the New 52. Originally she was working with Tim Drake and got involved with the Bat family to the point of actually donning a Robin costume and briefly becoming Batgirl. Time will tell if she follows that pattern again. Now, this being Batman, there are still plenty of other individuals, such as Cassandra Kane, Azrael, Huntress, Harvey Bullock, The Question, and Creeper, that are all technically considered part of the Bat family. But they've either been written out of continuity or they're no longer part of it all. But three hilarious ones that you need to know about are Batmite, a Batman version of Mr. Mixiespitalik that helps out from time to time, or at least he did pre-crisis. Ace the Bathound, which was recently reintroduced as Damien's pet dog, along with Batcow, Damien's pet cow. Perhaps one day we'll cover the entire Bat family, past and present, but as most of you know, we're here to help you stay current as best we can, and these are the important individuals. So I am Sal for TV Little House, standing in for the comic story, and if you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, subscribe, favorite, and share the video, because we always do appreciate it when you do. Thanks so much, and we'll see you next time here on Comic Storian.